you're probably wondering if AI is actually coming for your job, or if it's just another tech hype cycle. Well, I spent months digging through the latest research, job market data, and what's really happening behind closed doors at companies, and what I found is surprising. It's not what you think. AI isn't just taking jobs or creating them. It's doing something way more specific, and it's already started. Welcome back to bitbiased.ai, where we do the research so you don't have to. Join our community of AI enthusiasts with our free weekly newsletter. Click the link in the description below to subscribe. You will get the key AI news, tools, and learning resources to stay ahead. So in this video, I'm going to show you exactly what's happening in the U.S. job market right now with real data, not speculation. We'll break down which jobs are actually being affected, who's winning and who's losing, and then I'll walk you through Sam Altman's brand new AI jobs platform that OpenAI just announced, a direct competitor to LinkedIn that could completely change how you get hired. By the end, you'll know exactly how to position yourself in this new job market. First up, let's look at the data that everyone's talking about, but most people are misunderstanding. The reality check, AI's impact right now. Here's what's actually happening, and the numbers might shock you. An MIT study just found that about 12% of jobs in America could already be automated by current AI techniques, not future AI, the tools we have right now. But here's where it gets really interesting. When researchers at Stanford teamed up with ADP to look at actual payroll data, they discovered something that tells us way more than these predictions ever could. Young workers, specifically people between 22 and 25 years old, in AI-exposed roles have seen their employment drop by 6% since late 2022. For young software developers, it's even more dramatic. We're talking about a 20% plunge. Now before you panic, wait until you see this next part. While those young tech workers saw their jobs disappear, mid-career and late-career workers in the exact same fields actually saw employment growth. And jobs in what researchers call AI light occupations. Think healthcare aides, construction workers, hands-on service roles, those grew across all age groups. So what does this tell us? AI isn't replacing everyone. It's specifically targeting entry-level, routine tasks. The kind of work where you're just starting out and learning the ropes. Meanwhile, experienced workers who know how to use AI as a tool are actually seeing more opportunities. It's not automation versus humans. It's about who's adapting and who isn't. And here's the kicker that most headlines miss. The U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics still projects 17.9% job growth for software developers by 2033. So even in the field that's supposedly being replaced by AI, the government expects massive growth. Why? Because AI creates new types of work. Someone has to build these systems, maintain them, train them, and figure out how to apply them to real business problems. But this transition isn't smooth for everyone. In August 2025, the U.S. added only 22,000 jobs, one of the smallest gains we've seen in decades. Companies are holding back on hiring, betting that AI will boost their productivity enough that they can do more with fewer people. Economists are calling this a white-collar recession, where traditional office jobs are being reimagined. The Wage Premium Why AI Skills Matter now here's where the opportunity comes in, and this is crucial. OpenAI looked at the data and found that workers who are fluent in AI, people who know how to actually use these tools effectively, earn about 50% more than their peers. 50%. We're not talking about becoming a machine learning engineer with a PhD. We're talking about people who understand how to prompt ChatGPT well, how to automate workflows, how to integrate AI into their daily work. This creates what I call the AI fluency premium, and it's already reshaping hiring. Companies are moving towards skills-first hiring, where what matters isn't your degree or even your past job titles. It's what you can demonstrably do. Can you solve problems? Can you use AI tools to multiply your output? Can you show me, not just tell me? This shift is happening because businesses know 
that the traditional resume is broken. Someone could have gone to a great school, worked at a big company, and still have no idea how to use the tools that are now essential for the job. Meanwhile, someone who taught themselves AI skills online might be 10 times more productive. Sam Altman's Big Move The OpenAI Jobs Platform And that brings us to what Sam Altman just announced, and honestly, this is bold. OpenAI, the company that built ChatGPT, is launching its own jobs platform. A LinkedIn competitor. Let that sink in for a second. The company that's disrupting knowledge work is now building the system to match workers with jobs in this new AI economy. Sam Altman unveiled this at a White House tech dinner in September 2025, and the vision is pretty ambitious. He says they want to help millions find jobs by training 10 million Americans in AI skills by 2030. 10 million people. And here's what makes this different from every other job board you've ever used. Instead of you uploading a resume and hoping some recruiter searches the right keywords, OpenAI's platform uses large language models, the same technology behind ChatGPT, to actually understand your skills and match you with the right roles. They're calling it mapping your potential beyond your CV. So it's not just looking at your job titles, it's analyzing what you can actually do, your problem-solving ability, your projects, your AI fluency. The platform is designed with multiple tracks. It's not just for big tech companies trying to hire senior developers. They're building pathways for small businesses, local governments, nonprofits. For example, the Texas Association of Business is already planning to use this to connect thousands of Texas companies with AI-savvy workers to modernize local industries. Delaware is running pilot programs. This is about making the talent pool way broader and more accessible. But here's the part that really sets this apart. The jobs platform ties directly into OpenAI's new certification program. So instead of employers just trusting that, you know, AI, you can actually prove it with certifications you earn inside ChatGPT itself. They're launching what they call study mode, where ChatGPT acts as your tutor, you take interactive assessments, and when you pass, you get a verified credential that shows up on your profile. These certifications range from basic AI literacy, just knowing how to use these tools responsibly and effectively at work, all the way up to advanced prompt engineering and building custom AI workflows. And OpenAI is making this free. Walmart, the largest employer in the United States with over 2 million workers, is already offering free OpenAI certification courses to all their employees. Major companies like John Deere, Accenture, and Indeed are partnering on this. Think about what this means. A Walmart associate could spend a few weeks learning AI skills through ChatGPT, earn certifications, and then have their profile automatically visible to employers across the platform who are specifically looking for people with those exact skills. No four-year degree required. No expensive boot camp. Just proven ability. Sam Altman's vision here is pretty straightforward. He wants OpenAI to become the place where recruiting happens more efficiently and precisely. Job seekers could practice tasks in ChatGPT, get real-time feedback, build their skills, and have their profile updated automatically. Employers could literally ask ChatGPT to find candidates with specific AI skills and get a curated list. The platform is set to launch in 2026, with pilot phases starting earlier. And yes, this is a direct shot at LinkedIn. Which is interesting because Microsoft, LinkedIn's owner, is also OpenAI's biggest investor. There's definitely some tension there, and we'll see how that plays out. What this means for you. So what does all of this mean if you're looking for work or trying to advance your career? Let's break it down into what's actually actionable. First, the path into AI-related jobs just got clearer. Instead of sending out hundreds of random applications and hoping someone notices your resume, you can now build an AI skill profile that employers actively search. This is huge for people without traditional credentials. Maybe you've been working in retail, or you switched careers, or you don't have a college degree. If you can prove you know how to use AI tools effectively, through certifications and demonstrations, 
that could matter more than your background. For people already in their careers, this is your chance to level up. Adding AI certifications to your portfolio shows you're not just coasting, you're staying ahead of the curve. And remember that 50% wage premium we talked about? That's what you're unlocking. For employers, this creates two big opportunities. One, you can fill talent gaps way more efficiently. The AI matching engine is designed to eliminate the noise, no more scrolling through hundreds of irrelevant resumes. You get candidates who actually have the skills you need, verified through assessments. And two, you get access to a much bigger talent pool. The platform is designed to surface candidates from non-traditional backgrounds, different regions, people you would never find on a standard job board. But let's be real about the bigger picture here. This signals a fundamental shift towards skills-based careers. What you know and what you can do will matter more than where you went to school or who you worked for. AI fluency is becoming one of the most valued competencies you can have right up there with communication skills or leadership ability. The message is clear. If you're not learning AI tools and concepts, you're falling behind. Not because AI is replacing you, but because your competition is using AI to become more productive, more valuable, and more hireable. The workers who thrive in this new landscape, the ones researchers are calling super workers, are the ones who figure out how to use AI to handle the routine stuff so they can focus on higher level, creative, strategic work. The challenges ahead. Now, as exciting as all this sounds, we need to talk about the very real challenges and criticisms because this isn't a guaranteed success story. Building an AI-powered job market is way harder than it sounds. Josh Burson, a well-known HR analyst, points out several major obstacles. First, OpenAI needs to gather an enormous amount of candidate data, basically profiles of the entire workforce, to make this matching work. We're talking resumes, skills, portfolios, work history, at global scale. Then they have to verify those skills especially AI skills. LinkedIn, Indeed, ZipRecruiter. These platforms spent years building that infrastructure. Second, OpenAI has to build what's called an applicant tracking system that employers actually want to use. This is harder than it sounds. Google tried to crack job search. Facebook tried. They both eventually stepped back because the business model is tricky and integrating into companies' existing HR systems is complex. Burson actually warns about what he calls application tourism. When a tech company ventures into an unfamiliar area, realizes it's tougher than expected, and gives up. There's also the trust and bias issue. Any AI matching system has to prove it's not favoring certain demographics or inflating credentials. Employers need features like background checks, valid assessment scores, seamless integration with their systems. OpenAI will have to address these concerns head on if they want companies to actually adopt this over platforms they already use and trust. And then there's the elephant in the room, Microsoft and LinkedIn. LinkedIn is the world's largest professional network and Microsoft will definitely respond. Will they integrate similar AI features into LinkedIn? Will professionals even want to maintain profiles on two different platforms? There's a real question about whether people will split their time or just stick with what they know. OpenAI acknowledges some of these challenges. They've said they're studying what has and hasn't worked in previous upskilling programs. But critics will be watching closely. If OpenAI can crack the code and actually make this work at scale, the rewards are massive. If not, this could end up being a really ambitious experiment that doesn't quite stick the landing. How to prepare. So given everything we've covered, what should you actually do? Whether you're employed, looking for work, or running a business, here's the practical game plan. For workers, the path is actually pretty straightforward. Start building AI skills now, not later, now. The good news is that tools like ChatGPT are free, and OpenAI's certification courses are free. You don't need to spend thousands of dollars or quit your job to go back to school. 
You can start tonight, right from your phone, learning how to use these tools effectively. Focus on skills that are immediately practical. Learn how to write better prompts. Figure out how to use AI to automate parts of your workflow. If you're in marketing, learn how to use AI for content creation and data analysis. If you're in operations, learn how to optimize processes with AI. If you're in customer service, learn how AI can help you handle complex inquiries faster. And embrace the idea of lifelong learning, because the truth is, this isn't a one-and-done thing. AI is evolving fast, and the skills you learn today will need to be updated tomorrow. The people who thrive are the ones who stay curious and keep adapting. At the same time, don't forget about uniquely human skills. Fields that require empathy, creativity, hands-on expertise, healthcare, teaching, skilled trades, creative work, these still need people. The ADP data we talked about earlier showed strong growth for healthcare aid jobs even as some tech jobs declined. So a balanced approach is smart. Get AI fluent, but also cultivate the communication skills, management ability, and creativity that AI can't replicate. For employers, the message is just as clear. Invest in workforce development. You need to train your employees on AI and rethink how you hire. Many businesses, both large and small, are already struggling to fill AI-skilled roles. Partnering in these certification initiatives or running internal training programs can make you more competitive and adjust your hiring processes, start valuing demonstrated skills over credentials, use data-driven assessments, and be open to candidates from non-traditional backgrounds. So here's where we are. AI is reshaping the U.S. labor market faster than most people realize. The fears about automation are real. Young professionals in routine roles are already seeing job losses, and that's backed up by hard data. But the counterpoint is just as real. AI is creating new opportunities and new types of careers for people who are prepared. Sam Altman and OpenAI are placing a huge bet on the optimistic side of this story. Their new jobs platform and certification program could genuinely redefine how we think about skills, hiring, and career growth. The idea of learning AI inside ChatGPT, proving your abilities through certifications, and then being matched with jobs by an AI that understands both what you can do and what employers need, that's a powerful vision. But it's also an unproven one. Building the world's most advanced job matching engine is incredibly difficult. Even giants like Google struggled with this. Whether OpenAI can pull it off depends on adoption at massive scale and on delivering real value for both workers and employers. For now, here's what I'd recommend. Stay informed. Watch how this unfolds. Be ready to adapt. And most importantly, start building those AI skills today. Because whether it's OpenAI's platform or someone else's, the future of work is clearly moving toward people who know how to work alongside AI, not against it. Skills first hiring and AI fluency aren't just buzzwords, they're becoming strategic necessities. The workers who get ahead in the next five years won't be the ones with the fanciest degrees or the longest resumes. They'll be the ones who prove they can deliver results using the tools of tomorrow. If you found this breakdown helpful, let me know in the comments what part surprised you most. Was it the data on young workers, the scale of OpenAI's certification plans, or something else? And if you're already using AI in your work, I'd love to hear what you're doing. Drop a comment below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.